December 1903, the world's first powered flight takes off from a windswept beach in North Carolina. 66 years later, the lunar lander touches down on the surface of the moon. From Wright Flyer to Apollo 11 in a single lifetime is a staggering rate of progress, but one that today we take for granted. Faster communication, miraculous medicines, smarter gadgets. These innovations now come so thick and fast, it's tempting to assume they always will. But the truth is, this constant advancement is more precarious than it seems because it all hinges on one tiny piece of technology. Let's talk about transistors. Put simply, a transistor is just a switch, which either amplifies or shuts off a current. Not that impressive by itself, but connect four together and you can build a portable radio. A few hundred, you can make a digital calculator. 17,000, and you have the Apollo Guidance Computer. With enough transistors, even the sky is no limit. Of course, if you're taking 17,000 of something to the moon and back, they'd better be small. Fortunately, transistors can be printed directly onto wafers of material, usually silicon, to form an integrated circuit, or microchip. And over time, engineers have made these as space efficient as possible. In fact, improvement has been so consistent that the number of transistors per chip has doubled every two years. A growth curve known as Moore's Law, after Gordon Moore, the Intel co-founder who first predicted it. That's why a chip in the Apollo guidance computer had six transistors, while one in a new smartphone has several billion. So in a few years' time, we should have trillions of transistors on microscopic chips, right? Well, no. The trouble is, we're now building transistors so small that we've entered the realm of quantum mechanics, where physics does some very funny things, and electrons can unexpectedly appear on the wrong side of an open transistor. If we can't make transistors any smaller, we can't keep increasing the number on a chip, and Moore's law will be no more. The good news is that the end of Moore's law doesn't mean the end of technological progress. Size isn't everything, and there are other ways to optimize chips. Ditching silicon in favor of other materials with better performance. Stacking circuits in three dimensions with more interconnections. Swapping electronics for photonics. Sending signals using light instead of electricity. With manufacturers already exploring these possibilities, chip development has a bright future. Or at least it would if technical challenges were the only issue. But they're not. One problem is that now we've made chips small enough to go anywhere, we're putting them everywhere. Toothbrushes, razors, coffee mugs, plant pots. And the smaller the chips, the harder they are to make, meaning that manufacturers are fighting an uphill battle to meet demand. The result is a global shortage that's causing knock-on effects all over the place and looks likely to continue. But even this is overshadowed by a bigger, much scarier problem. The majority of the most advanced chips are fabricated in Taiwan, a country with, to put it lightly, a long, complicated and somewhat tense relationship with China. China claims ownership of Taiwan and hasn't ruled out invading it. That would give them a massive advantage over the US and other tech rivals, who are unlikely to let them take it without a fight. Suddenly, it seems that squeezing another billion transistors onto a chip is the least of our worries. The real problem is that our desire for constantly accelerating progress is edging us towards a new world war. Okay, this is a lot to take in. Drawing the link between quantum mechanics and geopolitics is no easy task, and figuring out what we can learn from it is harder still. But I think it points to something that the marvels of the modern world make easy to forget, and which we might not want to hear. Technological progress can't accelerate forever. In the pharmaceutical industry, for instance, E-Room's law, a literal reversal of Moore's law, states that the cost of developing a new drug doubles every nine years. That makes sense. The better the record we set, the harder it gets to beat. And the same applies elsewhere. If aviation had kept up that same incredible rate of advancement, we'd be exploring other planets by now. But I don't think the takeaway here is that we're headed for a new dark age. I think it's that we need to reconsider what we mean by progress. 
Sure, humans haven't made it to Mars, but instead we've built space stations, photographed black holes, landed probes on asteroids. Space exploration didn't end, we just adopted different goals. Likewise, even if Moore's law peters out, microchips are only one small piece in the much larger puzzle of human progress. But understanding their place in the complex dynamics of supply and demand, sovereignty and science might help us to find a better metric for progress. Because connecting billions of transistors is less important than the connections between billions of people.